I had a bag that was sort of like my first aid stuff. So this was emergency stuff. This bag actually lasted my whole through hike. Um, this bag had emergency things in it and it also had my battery packs. So my power packs and stuff were in here. When I say emergency things, like first aid and all that, this, don't, don't not carry one of these, okay? It's a bivy. It weighs nothing, it costs nothing, and it can save a human being's life. It's worth it. Have it. it sh this should be in your pack, whether you're day hiking or backpacking. It should always be in your pack because you never know when you, a person could be near hypothermia and need this. You get injured and you can't move fast to keep your body warm. This is something that will save your life. It's not something to joke about. I also carried hand warmers and toe warmers. I carried these more, much more in the beginning of my hike, but then I just carried a couple in case I just got really cold and I needed to be warm. You pack your fears and that's probably why I had these in my pack all the way through July. I used them a few times in the colder weather and they were very good to have. I had my patch kit in here for my Thermarest don't leave this at home because you will be so happy that you had it if you get a hole in your air mattress. It doesn't weigh anything, so bring it. Oh, here's another toe warmer. <laughs> Don't even give me grief for that. Uh, okay, some of the other things. So, you know, you buy these first aid kits and they have like 20 band-aids, you know, 15 of this, 20 of that, blah, blah, blah. I ended up going through my first aid kit and sort of whittling it down to the bare minimum. I sort of looked at it like, okay, if I get a cut or if I get blisters or whatever, I just need to have three days worth of whatever it is to get till I get to a town and I can get more. So I had Imodium for dysentery. I had Pepto-Bismol. I had Benadryl, but I only had like this much because I only needed enough to get me to town. Uh, Band-Aids, same thing. I didn't need 30 Band-Aids. I just needed enough to get me to town, to the next town. I had moleskin. These are actually my Garmin directions here that I brought with me in case there was an issue. So I had moleskin in there, some Band-Aids. Here's the Imodium AD. Here's the Pepto. Like I said, I didn't bring a lot. Um, I had some duct tape, which I found really useless compared to other things. Oh, little alcohol wipes. That's important because you do need to, everything gets so dirty and gross. Make sure you have alcohol wipe. You can sterilize a wound or whatever, or whatever you need. I also used um, hand sanitizer to sterilize my needle when I had to pop blisters. This is big but I used it a lot. Neosporin. This I used for anything. Blisters, I would put it on blisters to try and ward off infection. Unfortunately, I did not have this with me when I did get an infected blister, but I got it soon after. But I use it for like cuts, like when I have like open skin from my pack and my wet t-shirt rubbing, um, cuts. I had, I always had cuts cause I always fell. You know, so it was just nice to clean that out and then put some of this on there. It makes a difference. Um, so I had that. That was worth it. And this was the kit that saved me. This was my Luco tape. I can't even tell you how amazing Luco tape is for everything. It holds things when they get wet. And I use it for my blisters. So when I want to, so what I want to tell you about the Luco tape with blisters. I had severe blisters. I had them on both sides of my heels on each foot. I had them on my toes in a couple of places. And what I would do at the end of the day is I would sterilize my needle either with my hand sanitizer, which stings just so you know, or my lighter. Using the lighter is a better way to sterilize your needle than the hand sanitizer if you're averse to pain. 
you get used to certain levels of pain on the AT though. Um, but every night I would sterilize the needle and I would put thread on it for my blisters. I would stick the needle through the blister, express all the fluid from the blister, and then pull the thread through and leave the thread in it overnight. What that does is it allows all of that liquid to continue to come out of the blister, which is what you want. So it doesn't fill back up again. So you leave the thread in overnight, not the needle, you cut the needle off and you leave the thread in overnight. And then the next morning you pull it through. Then I would tape my blisters. Some people put gauze under it, depending on where you're putting it, you may want to do that. And then I would leave that on there all day and my feet would sweat enough or they would be wet from hiking in all the water and rain and whatever that I was able to just peel it off at the end of the day and let that air out overnight. So I always let my feet air overnight. As soon as I got to camp, I would take my shoes and socks off, put my Crocs on, didn't sleep with socks as soon as it was warm enough not to to let my feet air. It's so important. It's important to try and clean your feet too, but that was hard to do. So I had that. I also had my needle. I had it in this little container. So it didn't get lost. Just popped open. I had gauze to help wrap things if I didn't want them to, if I didn't want the Luco tape directly on it. The other thing my friend Kelly advised was to get these little corn things. If you had a really sore spot and you didn't want your shoe hitting it all the time, this was a nice little cushion to have. This was great when I broke my toe and this was great when I had my infected toe because this just sort of helped it not just get banged all day in my shoe. My little spool of thread. And then this flexible sticky tape, it like sticks on itself. This stuff was good just to sort of, like I said, like you might use this to hold the gauze on the spot and then put the Luco tape over it so that the Luco tape isn't directly on your skin. Um, so I had these, this was, this was the kit. This was the stuff I used every day, pretty much through my entire hike. I broke my toe. That Luco tape was what I used to buddy tape my toe and the gauze I used to cushion it. So all of this stuff was essential, I would say. I think that was it in my first aid my kit. My friend, Blue Sky Nancy, she gave me this cloth for drying my tent. Uh, this worked out really good. Um, it was tricky to get it dry the next day. It got dirty and it just, even when it was clean, this is as clean as it got. But this was good to wipe condensation out of my tent. And it's like so lightweight. It's like this little, it's almost like a piece of light cardboard. But I also had this Norwex cloth. This thing was great. I used this, um, you might say, why would you have both? I used this for my tent sometimes also, but I would also use this for like washing up. Um, if I was by a stream or whatever, I could use this to wash. Sometimes I used it for my tent. Um, sometimes it was just nice to have a dry cloth that, and it wrings out really well and it dries fast. So the Norwex towel, I recommend. What are you going to carry credit cards and money in and your ID? I ended up using this little Hyperlite bag. This was perfect. I stuck my driver's license, my health insurance card, a cash card, a credit card, and all my cash in here. And I was able to cinch it. It's not waterproof, but it was sort of water resistant. And I kept this in my little Hyperlite fanny pack. There was a little pocket in there. And I always knew where my money was. It, my money was. I always had my fanny pack on. Um, so it kept it close and secure. Um, a lot of people do different things. Some people just keep stuff in a Ziploc bag. That works too. Um, but that's what I use this for. Like I said, they had a sale. I bought a few of these bags and that's what I used it for. 
lot of people like to journal when they're on the through hike on their through hike and I'm one of them uh, when I first started my AT through hike I wanted to bring something that was lightweight I wanted to be able to write on paper this is amazing it's called Write in the Rain, R-I-T-E. They've been around since the early 1900s and they have this paper that can withstand moisture and they have a pen that will write when you're laying like this, when you're like this, when you're like this and write on this paper and even when it gets wet and it doesn't get destroyed, even when the pages get wet. I still kept it in a Ziploc bag in my backpack, but there's a lot of thoughts that I had from early on in my trip that I journaled and I'm so glad I did because now I have them to reflect on. So if you like journaling and you want to write stuff down, you know, this might be considered a luxury item, but it's a lightweight functional luxury item. So I recommend this.